I came to the tourism business through my passion for winter. I made a lot of tourists and Quebecers experience to sleep in igloos, to discover igloos, to build igloos, and uh, that was great for me also to share my passion. Obviously there was uh, an experimental side of the thing, and uh, I've been able to, uh, to build up my knowledge and uh, to be ready to enter into, into this innovative technique. We start from a liquid thing to create a big architecture piece of art. The idea is to build something that will mark people. Something unmelting. In what peoples were building igloos to their survival. Now we're at a point that we're creating a huge igloo just to amaze ourselves. It's the reinvented winter. My name is Jacques Desbois. I'm founder and CEO of the Hôtel de Glace of Quebec City. While well, the Hôtel de Glace is a marvel, it is a huge modern igloo made out of 20,000 tons of snow. The, the effort they've put into this, they've got actually 36 rooms, they've got a chapel, a disco, it's just unbelievable. I don't even know how many people it must have taken to carve that out. Um, I don't know how much time they must have had to do it because, I mean, to get it ready from January 6th, you figure they had, what, maybe two months? The core experience of my passion for winter is sleeping in igloo beneath any snow shelter. My expectations were basically expecting it to be fairly cold. Um, I, didn't, uh, I did not expect to sleep as well as I did. I expected to kind of be tossing and turning most of the night. Since I'm officially in that snow business field, my passion is to share this passion to the largest public as possible because the Inuits, the igloos, are something mythic for the people. And not that much people have the chance to touch the Great North. And my pleasure is to make this mythic North come toward the people. We were looking for an extreme vacation this year and it wasn't six seconds after finding this that we said, okay, that's it. And we planned the whole entire trip around it. Well, Quebec City, I call it uh, la capitale de la nordicité, which uh, we can put translated as the, the, the winter capital of North America. For most people, winter is a bit of an unknown. For us in Quebec, we live with it for such long periods of time that cold for us is something comforting. The first snowfall is happiness. If you want to have a, a winter experience, an amazing winter experience, I really think Quebec City, that's the place. Uh, if you take the, the Carnaval de Quebec, which is in February, beginning of February, and from here you can go anywhere with the snowmobiling, uh, dog sledding, cross-country skiing. We have everything within five minutes from our property. We also have ice fishing on the lakes and rivers not too far from us. The ice fish on the St. Anne River too, when it's a bit more into the season. It's really a popular activity that brings an enormous amount of people onto the Quebec lakes. The snowmobiling, we have departures that uh, leave the property here. Uh, within uh, one kilometer, we have uh, what I call the Trans-Canada Highway for snowmobiling. Uh, it's a departure from there. Uh, people, they can go uh, seven days that way, 15 days that way, they can go anywhere. Uh, for me, the, the winter is the spirit season. I enjoy in life and love 
every of our seasons, but uh, the winter one is the one making myself more uh, connected to, to my mind. I don't know why, but uh, that's, what is, that's what winter is for me. For me, Quebec is the capital of snow and the ideal location for our project. It's just a great place for all of us to be. Quebec is definitely the best place in North America to have the Hotel de Glace. Well, the big business uh, with the igloos was uh, to, to serve a French clientele, uh, which was really a prison huge uh, 20 years ago, to make them build or experience overnight stays. This igloo business, uh, I, I did start it without knowing about what was happening in Sweden. The first ice hotel in the world that has been created in, Swe in Sweden, it's a, basically a Swedish concept. I've been able to, uh, to go for a first time in 98 in Sweden to meet with the Swedish, Swedish guys there. And the smell, my first remember of the idea of, of snow have a smell is when I pass that door. Maybe it's because it's too much of concentrated stuff. I don't know, but the smell of snow. I've been shocked by this idea. And every winter I'm looking for that smell and I've, I remit that smell every winter. But basically, I had already an igloo company. I was used with the snow structures and I, have, I still have few workers that were involved in that igloo company at that time. And from the moment they knew that the, their technique would be in good hand, then there were no more locks in the, uh, on the doors. In 2001, we've been able to create the first Hotel de Glace in Quebec area. We had 1,100 people that, had, that came to spend a night at the Ice Hotel. We expect to be not so far of 5,000 this winter. Uh, we had 32,000 day visitors in 2001. There'll be about 120,000 this winter. The Ice Hotel is truly an extraordinary and majestic project. We're talking about a bar, a chapel, 36 rooms of which 15 are suites, and we even have an art pavilion. It's an incredible place. It's kind of a maze, and every year we change not only the structural design, but we also have to rethink and imagine the ambiance, the décor, and the designs within the hotel. We want every guest that comes at the Ice Hotel for whatever experience you want, overnight stays, day visit, wedding, cocktail, to have the feeling that their expectations have been overwhelmed. And that's also the same thing that we're doing with all the staff. We have actually 125 person that works for the Hotel de Glace. We want ourselves to be the first to be amazed. The building team has to be amazed every day of their working process. Jacques a visionary, an idealist. He has his vision at the Heiss Hotel and we gladly follow him blindly. We make sure we understand and deliver his vision. To build and create this marvel, this uh, Crystal Marvel, we have a construction team, and the leader of that team is Jeanne Aubert. I'm Jeanne Aubernier, the director of expertise at the ICE Hotel. My role is to bring the construction of the hotel to fruition. For construction this year, the big challenge was to just get started because the temperature wasn't at the right level. So it was very hard for us to produce the snow, which is, of course, our principal element of construction. Jeanneau is uh, working with the assistance of two key players, which are Gilles Roy, our general foreman of the building of the Ice Hotel, and Serge Pelloquin, which is the art director. Our artistic director, Serge, takes charge of the thematic decoration and everything with respect to artistic design inside the ICE Hotel. 
I'm Serge Pelequin. I've been the artistic director at the Ice Hotel since the beginning, which is 12 years now. My team of sculptors is my family. In a family, we know well that there are some white sheep, some black sheep, and even some beige sheep. I accept them all as they are. Some of the best in the world at their trade. They're the best at style and form. But I don't need superstars. I need passionate people. I need people who are talented. I need people who work as a team and under a lot of pressure. Gilles' job is to manage the construction teams, to manage work in terms of the planning and work schedule. My name is Gilles Roy, technical supervisor at the ICE Hotel. The structures of the hotel have been fairly easy for us to manage. It's the people we work with and the context in which we work that is, for me, the biggest challenge in doing this project. I need people who have the same desire and passion that I have for this project. That's a real challenge. Building the ICE Hotel itself, well, that's become easy for us. Well, actually, there's nothing easy at the ICE Hotel. Of course, we have to deal with whatever weather we have. This year we started a week and a half later, which meant longer days to reach the same stage at the same time of year. 14 to 16 and sometimes 18 hour shifts. Some extremely long days to be able to deliver the hotel on time. To build the ICE Hotel every year we have a stretch of 50 days, in which we have to be able to place 30 working days. Then we have a 20 days of buffer. Our main concern is temperature. The theoric starting date is December 1st. We've been able to start December 10th this winter. And 50% of the buffer was blown away right at the beginning. Over the years, through experience in constructing the ICE Hotel, we've separated teams into four departments. The guys who take care of the snow, specifically snow. The guys who take care of the ice. A team called the multitaskers. And the operating team, the guys who run the machinery like snow blowers and moving the molds. Those guys assist the ice team, snow team and multitaskers. The snow team is the one that handles the formwork and molds to assemble the building. We create huge alleys with ceilings uh, of uh, 14 to 20 feet of height and uh, we use these arch moles, metallic moles in, on which we are blowing snow, that special snow that we're producing and after a number of hours the, the cake is ready we pull off the, the, the metallic moles on skis and then you have an auto standing snow shelter just solid water the machine we use to make the snow for the ice hotel is called the Turbo Cristal. It's the ideal machine to build the hotel quickly. Everything depends on the temperature. The ideal temperature for building the ice hotel is between minus 7 and minus 12 degrees. The colder it is, the better. The machine will take as much water as we give it. We prepare the snow and then we do a first layout of the molds. There's a formwork and the snow blower has to be able to work around it. Once the molds are buried, there's a curing period. The next step is to remove the formal. There is a reassembly of the molds for a second casting, always keeping in mind the number of molds. We remove all of our metal structures from the hotel. After that, it's time to do our interior partitions. That's what we use to separate the rooms. All the elevations are indicated on the plan. My name is Alain Demain. I'm on the expertise or snow team for the construction of the ICE Hotel. Our team makes everything that is a snow structure. To make a wall like this takes a few hours. Maybe two or three hours depending on the circumstances. 
What we have done is a framework to fill with snow and close up the snow structure. What we are doing is cleaning it up so that we can remove the frame, leaving a snow surface. When we make the snow, we have to make sure it's the right and perfect density. We can't use natural snow for this reason. As soon as we place it, it hardens and we have a solid structure. I haven't found a better way to spend my winter and I hope to be part of the team again next year. Each year I rediscover the magic of working with snow. You can make a hole, check out what's in there, fill it back up and you can't tell. It's really a super matter, a super material for construction. Working with the snow for us means uh, creating the, 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 the building, the, the building shell, or uh, the rough building team. And all the ice work for our workers is about finishing. Uh, and uh, it requires, uh, you have to have a mind for ice working, and you have to have a mind for snow work. The hardest thing when working with ice is to be precise with our cuts. If, let's say, you mess up a cut because you were distracted and not paying attention, you not only waste ice, but you have to detach it, and then you lose a lot of time as a result. It's really important to use our tools well, particularly the electric chainsaw, so that we can cut the ice well and it looks good. The ICE team will build everything on the inside of the hotel. In other words, the ICE hotel is made entirely of ice on the inside. The columns, the walls, the tables, and all the furnishings. It's that team that takes care of all of that with the sculptors. So we see here an ICE call. We can easily see the separation between each ICE block. The blocks we use are a certain size, so we have to put one on top of the other to build a big wall, like this, so it's not one big block of ice, but many smaller ones. We have to glue them together with water, and this is the result. To make it last a long time, we make a type of mortar that we call sludge. It's simply a mixture of water and snow that allows us to bind the blocks. It makes for a great seal between each block. You know, these are two universes, the construction and the art. And uh, the Hotel de Glace is the junction of uh, both words, and, uh, and uh, Serge is, uh, remains unique. Working with Serge Pelequin? Well, that takes someone with nerves of steel and who likes to run. Because he's a character who will make magic very quickly. So you need to work well, connecting to and with him all the time. We've finished many projects together and have gone through a lot. I think we complement each other. We've worked together for 12 years now and I still enjoy working with him. Suddenly Serge arrives, oh, we know that the, the, the sculptors are coming and uh, it changes the, the dynamic of it. Oui. <laughs> oui, j'ai bien taillé mes trucs, j'ai passé ma plaque. Euh, fait que, est-ce que le fini est beau pour toi? Oui, mais est-ce qu'on l'a fait? On a fini une petite... Peu Oh boy, ça c'est pas facile. Serge is a great artist, but also a great leader. I would say a great psychologist also. To, 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 to make sure that he, he can get the best from each artist desiring to perform at the Hotel El Nice. I always tell my sculptors that the finality of art isn't to display the objects forever in a museum. It's far more interesting and more inspiring to create what I call brief moments of beauty. My task is not only to design and develop the concepts, but also to find a way each year to choose a location that matches well to a theme that we will create. This theme will be displayed in all the rooms, bars, general areas and the chapel in such a way that makes an integrated complex within a solid theme. 
The theme for this year is dedicated to the great north of the Quebec province. We've decided to focus on the northern native people that will come. We will receive them uh, during three weekends, I mean the three main communities, the Inuits, the Crees, the Innus. They will come to share their, their culture. I'm Melanie Vincent. I'm in charge of the activities for the First Nations and Inuit of the North here at the uh, Hotel de Glace for the Huron-Wendat Nation. It's important that the Aboriginal peoples are here at the uh, Hotel de Glass because we were the first peoples of, of this land and uh, it's a, this partnership is a great opportunity to promote that as well and uh, to show people how, how, uh, how we live, how we are and how, uh, how is our hospitality. We're inspired by the desire to interpret the culture of a people, of a nation. Whether it's through their culture, their knowledge, or their stories, we translate their methods through art, and we also reflect their way of feeding themselves through hunting and fishing. So this year, the Ice Hotel theme is the culture and knowledge of the First Nations and the Inuits. The idea consists of taking geometric forms and transposing them. For example, we'll take a bas-relief and trace the lines that intersect. We'll also find a way to recreate a type of weave, a kind of crossing of the lines. Then we will connect it directly to the structure and find ways to create texture in the snow using different knives with different blades that will give us low reliefs and high reliefs. This will make it dynamic and we will transpose everything we saw here on a section of the wall. When we plan a theme for a room, I don't show up with a drawing where everything is inflexible. I know the artists need to create, express themselves, so it's simple. The basic theme is defined. The spirit, the essence is defined. The areas and the places are defined. The dimensions of the beds and tables, they're defined. Low relief there. Over there, other parts are defined from the start. But I give the artist the freedom to express himself, not only to enjoy the work, but to produce a worthwhile result. My name is Ociel. Um, I've worked for the Ice Hotel for a number of years now. We have a lot of fun carving the snow and ice. The, the piece behind me, as you can see, is a, a free form. Um, it's a rectilineal design, which um, involves uh, geometrical um, forms which um, comes to life when um, we get the, um, the three-dimensional uh, aspect in the, the tracing of, of uh, the forms. For me, the thing I like best working at the Hotel de Glace, well, there's two. One is the freedom of the work as sculptors, to create our sculptures how we want. So we have a lot of creative freedom, and also the team. It's amazing to see this built in one month from nothing, all of us working together. In this suite, I was inspired by the Inuit legend of Sedna, which is one of their principal deities. This represents Sedna, who had six puppies with her first husband who was a dog. One day, her father decided to kill his dog. So to prevent her puppies from dying of hunger, Sedna sent them all out to sea. This represents the dog's voyage out to sea. According to legend, each group of dogs created the Europeans, the Native Americans, and the Inuits.
What's interesting is to create, to come and create the atmosphere. What we really want is for people to come into the suite and say, wow. So bringing a touch of wow, that's sort of my own personal goal. The biggest danger we face is when we're working on an interesting piece or room and we only get half of it done in the time allotted. We know people are going to see it, so from the artist's emotional perspective, it's a bit sad for him to say that I didn't have time to finish my project. I really wish I had the time. In that sense, there's always some disappointment, and it happens. It happens more often in the last few days because we have such tight schedules. There are things we will start and make a rough attempt at, but we won't manage to finish it. Today it's Wednesday and uh, on Friday night it's the grand opening ceremony. Uh, we are on the last 48 hours rush. With these conditions and with the temperatures, often with rain, often with storms or extreme cold, we're battling nature. Against the cold, against the temperature. And at the same time, we have a very short period in which to complete everything. That's how we developed our techniques. How do we achieve the entire complex? We'll first make an attempt at the first ice hotel. The following week in the same location, we'll go over it a second time, so that we can always deliver what we need to. Next, we'll go over it a third time, the sexy final touch. This gives us the ability to do one, two, three stages, improving each time, but not just in one area. It's all over. There's a lot of work going very rapidly in its execution. And I think that that challenge attracts people to the artistic team who are interested in the immediateness of the work and who are excited by the speed they must work at. I manage a team of artists. There are 18 of us divided into three teams. Once the snow team has delivered the snow structure, what I refer to as the creative angels arrive. What the angels do is sand down the walls, cut out the base of the doors, and start a rough carving of all the less interesting parts of the snow team's delivery. In effect, they prepare the area so that the second team can arrive. They're the ice team. My ice team will make what we call the furnishings, all the basic structures, the benches, the couches, the tables. The third group, the sculptors, will arrive and create the design and the carvings in all those parts. Hi, my name is Joby. I'm a snow and ice carver. I'm now working at the Hotel de Glace in Quebec. It's like when I was little and I played in a snowbank. But now I have special tools. It's a meditation. I love it. Well, Serge, Serge over his art direction responsibility is responsible of a key moment of the Hotel de Glace, which is the having everything ready for the grand opening ceremony. And uh, there's a big rush in the last 24 hours. There, there, there are many rushes, many uh, milestones we have to reach, and Serge has to reach that one. Everything has to be synchronized. Everything has to be perfect. And that's why we can't make any mistakes. It's a pressure and very stressful. It's now been two days since I had any real sleep. Everyone has their responsibility and we want it to be a success. We're hoping for it to be as perfect as possible because we want the guests coming to this party to be enchanted. So it starts in the morning. We install and set up lighting bridges. We've already laid a place out where the band will perform. We do sound checks. The floater team will clean up everything, make it look really nice. We cut all the visitor access to allow us to prepare all of this. It's a party that we open to the public so they can come and discover the ICE Hotel. While at the same time, it's a party where we close the book. The work is delivered. So we work quickly for the delivery. We hurry up, 
go, go, go to finish that entrance so that when people arrive, it will be beautiful. The things that are left to do, the northern pavilion is almost finished. But we still have to finish the enclosures, the security and a little design outside the buildings. The pressure exists at different times depending on the team. For us, the pressure is at the beginning of the season when we have to deliver the snow so that the other teams can come in after us and finish up. Right now the ice team has more pressure than we do. We're doing all right as we approach the end. We're here in the northern pavilion where yesterday we began making this ice circle. First we had to get the ice blocks from the truck, take them down with clamps, then put them in the tractor and get them as close as possible. We want to create a nice even circle. We align the ice blocks by putting a nail in the middle of the circle and then measuring out seven feet. We then place and adjust each block one at a time so that the curve is even as we go along. We also have to adjust the height of the snow floor to place the blocks at the right level and distance, and so it looks interesting. Then we put water on the joints where the blocks touch so that they meld together and don't move for the rest of the winter. When all of the blocks are placed, we can make angled cuts to put all the ice plaques with the signatories of the Quebec North Pavilion on. Then we iron the ice so that it's perfectly transparent. And we can easily read what's inside. After that, it's the sculptors who come and have their fun with what we've made. We're on time. We have a little bit more to do before the end, but we're off to a good start. I think we'll make it. to say to everyone, our crew, the staff, the public here, and all the medias that have interest toward Hotel Le Glass, merci beaucoup to all of you. Well, when the construction team has finished his job, it's time for the operation team now to take over and to make the magic move. We expect from the operation team to deliver the dream, the magic we brought into the building effort. Well, the grand Manitou of the operations here is Jean-François Paris. My work is mostly to manage everything to do with three sectors. Maintenance, along with Fox's team, plus everything to do with the guides in the bar. It's not very different from a standard hotel, 
there's maintenance and chores to do. It's the same principle. What's different for us is the bar and guide sections. It's rare for a hotel to let people visit the rooms or the bar like we do here. On top of it being a hotel, it's also an event. It's a performance to build it, and it's a performance to operate it. I've always wanted to, to come, and we were coming down to Quebec, so we thought, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to stop here. And uh, so I was just doing a lot of research and uh, checking out reviews, and most of them were very positive, so I was very excited. And so I didn't tell Peter much about it. I just sort of said, we're going to the Ice Hotel, and, <laughs> and that was it. And uh, so it was like a little bit of a surprise for him when he came. Okay, to start, clients begin by calling our line and making a reservation. Then, on the day, they show up at the visitor center. I was in a little bit of a shock because I could never imagine. I'm not the kind of person that actually goes out and sleeps outdoors. And, um, you know, I mean, just the anticipation to get to that day, I was a little nervous. And then, um, I guess, yesterday when I was sitting on the couch and uh, Connie said to me, you know what, it's time. At the visitor's center, we give them a little pass and take care of their bags. When the client arrives, we want them to de-stress and begin living their experience immediately. When, when I first got here, <clears throat> we just got out of the car and we came down because we were trying to get that first tour in and it was just breathtaking. <laughs> I want you to uh, make a guess. How many tons of snow do you think we have to make to build your telegraph? Uh, make it again. And you don't win anything if you have the right uh, answer. Tons? Tons. Okay. Let's see. 500 tons. 500 tons? 50,000 tons. It's a lot. My expectation coming in is that there would be a room or two that were phenomenal, but there was nothing they left unturned. Every single corner, ceiling, doorway, hallway, room. Um, it was detailed beyond detail. There were even structures on top of tables and bars. There were books cut out. It was far more elaborate and artful than I had ever imagined it would be. Seeing the Hotel de Glass for the first time, it was like breathtaking, you know. You can't imagine how they built it or how they even began to, to construct a building like this. It's so well done and like very detailed. I was mesmerized. It was, uh, it was a really um, impressive Next, the client will come down to registration where they sign in and we give them all their coupons for the bar and for breakfast the next morning. Then we assign them their room and a locker. Imagine how much they is doing these carvings. Look how much work is in these. Yeah, there's a lot of detail on these walls. It's crazy. Okay, here's our room. There you go. Oh boy. Oh. Really tiny. Oh, we're going to be sleeping on this block of ice. We asked the clients to come back after 6 p.m. for their orientation. Here this place, this is the pavilion Celsius. This is open during 24 hours. So if you have any problem, any question, you can go at the front desk and ask. Then you have your locker, you have the washroom, the shower. These sessions are about 45 minutes, during which we take the time to explain what to wear and how to get in and out of their sleeping bags. It's not always obvious how to sleep in a bag like a mummy, all zipped up. So we tell them what to do, how to breathe properly, and what to wear so that all goes well. I think getting into the sleeping bag was the, the hardest part. That was my biggest fear, is being cold. So, and it worked out that I was very, very comfortable. It worked out. It was a lot of fun. Then you have to zip your sleeping bag. Go slowly with your zipper. And you know when you go too fast with the zipper, it always stops. So it's the same thing here. You just go slowly like that. Then you attach to the bag. I was surprised how warm it was in the sleeping bag. I was expecting be chilly but I was actually very toasty and at one point I started sweating because I was so warm and I had to unzip a few things so that was something that I didn't expect. Then you have to put this part and you just add just around your face. Ah, nice! <laughs> you will see you will love it. So you're supposed to look like this tonight. Ensuite les clients peuvent se diriger vers le bar. Then the clients can go to the bar. 
We have many activities like ice sculpting that bring the group together. Then there's a spa and sauna. Clients will usually take a little 30 to 40 minute spa before heading to bed. We did, uh, we did do the scavenger hunt. Uh, we went to the bar, the disco bar, and had a couple of drinks. Uh, we must have taken about a thousand pictures. Um, we met a lot of really nice people. Uh, just unbelievable people from all over the world actually have come to this uh, to this hotel to participate. Um, we also did uh, we did some sculpting and uh, people went to bed anywhere from I guess from 10:30 all the way up to one o'clock. I mean I know I know we were up to at least 11:30, 12, and I guess there's just that anticipation. Everybody's like, you know just dying to get into bed to see how it, how it is. <laughs> It was excellent, actually. We got an yeah. excellent night's rest. I was expecting it to be a lot, uh, a lot colder than it was, and I slept better tonight than I probably did last three nights in, you know, nice, uh, expensive hotels. So it was amazing how you go from being relatively toasty in your clothes, making the cold little transition in your sleeping bag, and you sleep like a rock all night long. Incredible how they make that happen. Well, for the day visitors, like any other guests, it would be welcome first. When the day guests arrive, it's just splendor for them. They can't imagine. It's like they're in a museum and they can see and touch the ice and snow sculptures. You can't usually do that in other places. Well, it's not true, but some people think we have ice toilets that we put a little ice pot in and a bit of fur on top. But no, that's become an urban myth. It's all good, though. The podium of the questions for the day visitors is how it is built. Where do the people sleep? Where do they get married? We have approximately 25 to 30 weddings each year at the Ice Hotel. From the moment they set foot on the site, operations handles everything to do with the chapel. We rake, light the candles, and make sure that everything is perfect. When the newlyweds arrive, we open and close the doors during the ceremony. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing kids enjoying the slide in one of our ice slides, but also to see seniors being when we were children, we made little igloos to play in. Well, it's the same principle. But now the children, the grown-up children, can rediscover their youth when they enter the ice hotel. We're sailing something unique. We're sailing a dream. We're sailing something outstanding. Imagine the level of the expectation. We do not only have to reach them, we have to overpass them. My job as a guide is to create excitement. Two levels, I would say. First, people have to see it as a wonderful piece of art. But also, I want to create that as a second degree. They have to realize that everything started with water, when water becomes a location. And all the expertise, all the technical challenge under that. And then, when I reach that, this second level, my page is done. I got a feeling of magic just driving up like when we were, at first when we saw it, like how like the layout, then after when we walked through the different uh, rooms, I think it was just breathtaking. Like I honestly had to stop every single time to like just look at everything and be like, just in awe that somebody actually thought about this and created this and how they even started. I think that for me was like definitely magic. We took a picture with our faces in the Eskimo sculptures. When we got up close to these sculptures, the questions started. How did they do this? What tools did they use? I would have loved to have seen a little corner where the tools were on display. How many hours did it take? It's all the architecture. The time it took to do that. It's like, I can't imagine. It's something to be really proud of. I guess it was so surreal, the construction of it, that it never once occurred to me that it was, it was made from ice. I mean, you just, I, you hear about it, but when you get there, my brain never made the connection that this was just like, you know, the same stuff you pull out of your refrigerator and throw in a glass of lemonade. When I, when I noticed that the structure was completely built out of 
ice. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a structure built around like a metal aspect, but it actually is completely ice. You know, back home we have so many heaters and air conditioning and dual pane glass windows and here all out of one element we've created an entire glamorous lifestyle. It's pretty interesting so I'm going to remember that all the way home. My name is Jean-Francois Menard. I'm the operations coordinator at the ICE Hotel. With Fox's team, it's all about maintenance. Maintenance of the grounds and prepping the rooms before the night guests arrive. During the day, visitors come in for tours, so it's really important that between the two, everything is cleaned up and restored. I think what is special about working at a hotel made of ice compared to a regular hotel is that if we take, for example, the bedrooms, we do the same kinds of things, but with different tools. For washing the floors, we use shovels, lots of rakes, and lots of flat irons. The flat irons allow us to fix the surfaces so that everything is smooth. Inside, it's the same idea. Everything is smooth and white. Here we have a tiller used in the summer to remove dead grass and harrow the lawns. So we modified the engine a bit, and now it's used as a tool that allows us to remove ice. When four to 6,000 people a day walk over the same spot, it turns to ice very quickly. We run the tiller every day to get rid of the ice before we put new snow on the floors of the rooms and the corridors. We close visitor access to the rooms at 8 p.m. so that we can maintain them from 8 to 9. We give them a little rake and harrow to get rid of the ice that builds up during the day and to make nice straight patterns. Then we bring in the sleeping bags, making sure they're the right sizes for the kids and adults and determine if we need to make any last-minute adjustments. Finally, we light the candles. Our goal is to make it as white and pristine as we can. It's all these little details that, when people arrive here, makes them forget everything and only see the ice and snow. A big challenge is to keep all the electrical wires hidden. It's really the smallest detail, but it allows the people to perceive only the beauty of the ice and snow of this very unique type of construction. It's really all about making it magical for everyone. The ice, the snow, it has to be white and clear everywhere. These are little details, but it's all these details that make the difference. I think that the Hotel Glass is so successful because it delivers its promise. Uh, you can have a fantastic concept, something uh, outstanding that you could break because you do not take care as well as you have to do for such a beautiful thing. When we close on March 25th, we will remove everything, all the tools and equipment inside, then use an excavator to flatten the hotel because if we let it fall down on its own, if we let it melt with the temperatures, it could take a very long time. So for safety reasons, we flatten everything. This way we're sure nothing will happen. No one will go inside. Everything will melt and turn back into water just as it started out. There's a mix of emotion when uh, uh, we see the hotel glass melt away, fade away. And in the meantime, we are 
uh, imagining the next one. Even though the Ice Hotel is a three-month event, it does take a year-round support team at the building plan and budget level. So some of us work all year. Well, the future I, uh, I see for the Hotel Atlas, uh, why not making uh, our northern reality and personality lives all year long on this site, uh, you know? And uh, why not making uh, a piece of winter to live year long? 80% of the uh, uh, international tourists are coming during summertime. Imagine what they miss because they come in summertime. I wish one day to make them feel winter, and to taste winter and summer here. My biggest goal and concern is to make that Hotel de Glace thing, phenomenon, reach its full potential. And to be able to make that thing uh, live after, after me. Thank you.